Hi there, welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me. Well today we've got um, a new kit, that, well new, not brand new as in just come on the market like some others we've had recently but uh, newish, it's um, a couple of years since it came out actually and it's the Airfix 172 Hunting Jet Provost. So the Hunting Provost was the basically the sort of military training version for um, it's like the UK version of the Strike Master, if you like, um, UK variant for the RAF. So this is a training aircraft for weapons systems, if you like. Um, doesn't actually show it with any weapons, so I don't think it comes with any weapons or stores as such. But really, I think it was for low-level training and used heavily, you know, in the Lake District and Wales for training pilots before they went on to fast jets like the Tornado or the Jaguar and that type of thing. Now then. It's got some nice artwork and we've got two schemes with it. So let's take a look. Two options here and we've got both based at RF Chivener as it turns out. And we've got one from 1989 and one from 1982. 89 is this sort of grey scheme. 1982 is the sort of typical RAF sort of late sort of late 70s, early 80s wraparound. Well, it's not a wraparound, it's a conventional scheme, but the dark, uh, dark type roundels, low vis. Uh, and then obviously the 1989 one, it's actually the, uh, it's the tactical weapons unit. So this is, a, again, a, a probably weapons conversion unit where they teach you how to use certain types of weapons if you're changing from one type to another of aircraft. Uh, this is probably where they do refresher courses and that sort of thing. Um, now, in terms of the details of this one, it's actually um, it was actually originally built, uh, tooled in 2016, and this particular version, the original tooling was 2016, but the promise this T4 version is 2018. So this is just a couple of years ago or so, uh, and I thought we'd have a look at it because it's uh, quite a nice looking kit, and some of you may have seen my Matchbox Strike Master review recently and as I explained at the time my own father actually worked on both this and the Strike Master when he was at British Aircraft Corporation in Wharton and that was in the late 60s so quite interesting for me too. So let's have a look what we've got. Typical Airfix we have a single bag which I don't like and I don't think any of us do. Then we have some decals and some instructions and we'll have a look at I think, the decals first and then we'll get into the instructions and finally on the bag. So, what have we got? Um, nice decals, doesn't say so but I'm pretty sure it's Cartograph from Italy. Let's have a close look at them. They do look really, really nice, I've got to say. Very, very sharp, crisp, lovely colours. It's got Cartograph written all over it even though it doesn't physically have it written on it. Um, you can tell it's one of their products. There's um, yeah, there's quite a few uh, stencils as well, actually. Um, so we've got these sort of later 1989 ultra low vis RAF markings, a bit like they have on the tour, uh, as they did have on the tornadoes, but particularly on the typhoons today. And then we've got the more traditional 70 stroke 80 style here. But they are very, very colourful, they're very sharp, there's no excess carrier film, very nice decal, I've got to say. So let's have a look at the instructions. Percival Hunting, Percival Jet Pilot. Well, you know, this aircraft has that many different names. It's astonishing, isn't it? Hunting, Hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure, you know, even if it's. I'm going to read what it says here because I think we just need to know this, see what their spin on this is. As the Jet Provost was entered in the late 50s and quickly became the RS Premier Jet, jet Basic Trainer. The T3 model, in, which it was launched in 59, had an uprated engine and an improved canopy design offering, by, offering the side-by-side -side seating for the pilot and the pupil, uh, giving them both a much improved view. The Provost was joy to fly, very forgiving, very easy to learn on, and most 70s, 60s and 70s frontline RAF pilots learn their trade on its unswept wings. Its reliability and strength also made its suitability as a jet trainer, in addition to the adding of the wing tip tanks on the T3 also added to the endurance. This model, the T4, was visually ident identical to the T3 but featured a more powerful engine and both variants had a wide variety of RAF squadrons and training colleges. The T4 even served as the RAF, the RAF Pelicans display team. 
Today a few of the jet propers remain. Suitability as training machines make them still suitable for civilian jet operators. So actually this is what confused me because I saw the T3 and I thought it doesn't look any different than the actual model. So actually the model isn't, it's the markings really. The T4 has got the later engine which you can't see. So we won't worry about that. So some of you may have built the T3 and say, oh well in that case I know it. <laughs> Let's have a look at the actual uh, instructions then and bring you in for this. So obviously we've got a side-by-side -side cockpit arrangement which is unusual of course, uh, certainly in a small aircraft. So you build up your uh, sort of tub area, you pop it in your ejector seats. We have clearly got one of the the Airfix team here, not sure which one this is. We've actually got it's a very serious face he's got there isn't it? Because obviously Airfix modelled their faces on a real person in their team. It's quite funny, I quite like it actually. Um, Putting in your ejector seats, you've got your ejector hoods going over the top. Um, they go in side by side, and you've got your instrumentation coming in here. And then you pop it in this whole cockpit assembly, which looks very, looks very good actually, very business-like, isn't it? And then that gets popped in, and you bring your two sides of your fuselage plummet together. Two and a half grams of weight, because we don't want any tail sitters, obviously. Don't forget to put your nose weight in, guys. Then you've got your tail planes going on and your tailpipe goes over the top, rudder goes in here and then you bring your, your lower wing in which is complete the tank's already on it and here we go again, Airfix really annoy me with this I've got to be honest, I hope you're watching everybody from Airfix why can't you stop this nonsense? Aircraft stands sold separately, no, don't sell it separately, put it in the kit just charge another pound, I don't care, nobody does just put it in the kit, we don't want to start hunting around for a stand you know, this kit was less than £10, so I don't know why it's a problem, you know, make it 11 or £12, it'll be fine. Get yourself a stand, and on the armour, I'm going to have a rant here. Rant time. You're not listening, are you, Airfix? <laughs> Get yourself stands, include them in the kit. Certainly on the 72nd like this, they should have a stand, it's silly, stupid. You should be able to display them in flight when it's a small kit, and the younger models will appreciate that and use it. And on your armour kits, when you've got them in 70 seconds now, big range, get yourself a diorama like Matchbox used to do. It makes all the difference. If it costs another £1.50, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. They'll sell because people like them. We saw the reaction with the Matchbox reviews that I've been doing recently. Everybody says how good the dioramas were. So we want a bit of a diorama stand for it to go on, you know. Anyway, rant over. Back to the model. <laughs> so, i get the zoom to come. I'll get you back in. Here we go, it's very slow today, I don't know whether my battery's about to go flat or something, it's not behaving itself very well at all. Anyway, you're bringing in your top wings down onto your main wings, and then you're putting in your intakes. Be careful with these, because they're always a problem intakes are, getting them flush. You've got like an inner lip, um, with some uh, baffles, I think it is, and then you've got your outer piece. You've got your gear door, or if it's closed, or if it's open, uh, they actually close on the provost around the extended uh, nose wheel. So even though the wheel is down, the doors close behind it, or around it, I should say. Uh, similar with the, well, not quite the same, obviously, but you've got the option of having it closed on the main uh, gear, or you have your gear put in here. And then this is a nice sort of short instructions. It's nice to have something that only takes a couple of minutes to do the review on the instructions. Sometimes they go on and on and on. That tornado I did recently took me about 20 minutes just to do the instructions. Okay, so then you've got your canopy going on there and you've got an option here. You can have it open or closed. Now that's really interesting. So you can have it slid back or like this, which looks really, really good. It's slid back over the pilot's head so you can have it shut. Uh, and it is the same piece, so you just position it differently depending on how you want to do it. And there we are, then we've got into our sort of colour call-outs and all our decal positionings, uh, plus all your stencils. Um, I quite like that one actually, I think I'd go for the, uh, the slightly less boring colour, proper camo scheme with the sort of, what is it, light sea grey underneath? Yeah, aircraft light grey underneath. And you've got dark green and dark sea grey on the top. Very standard fare for the RAF at the time. So, without further ado, let's have a look in the bag, shall we? It's not going to take long, but it's small. Let's open it up. 
Whoops. I don't know how I've done that very poorly. I can't. Third time lucky. There we go. I wish Airfix would do something about these bags. A, one bag isn't enough. B, how about a resealable bag, please? Because that's what the manufacturers do, even in these small scales. Ah, uh, my hobby, resealable bag, no problem. Right, let's have a look what we got. One, two, three. Oh, it's so small. <laughs> right. Let's have a look at the clear parts. There we are. Bring you in nice and close. Now then. Oops. Is it? There we go. They are very, very nice. Those are really clear. New, clear, no scratches. No distortion, man. But it's really nice. Yeah, that's an excellent... Uh, there's actually two different versions of the canopy. I've got a feeling that's because it's a generic generic canopy for the T3 and T4. Let me just check this. Now there are two different options. Now why would that be? Oh, 402. Hmm. Uh, not entirely sure why why they've done that. So very similar but they're not the same. Uh, answers on the postcard. I'm sure somebody knows. Perhaps I'm, I'm the one that should know that but I don't. Sorry about that. All right, so we'll put the clear parts back in that little bag. Where they're going to be safe. And then we have got the sprue, which has got the wings on and the tanks. This is the top wing as opposed to the bottom. Now this has been cleverly done. This is like a it's almost like a slide rolling type situation where they've gone and got the the angle to give it its dihedral correctly. They've actually built that into the sprue. It's not warped like <coughs> some others, like Meng, we've heard recently. No, this is intended this way. And it's beautiful. Look at the detail on this. I have to bring you right in on this. You see that? Now look at the, uh, the panel lines. That's really, really fine. So when you look at this in 70 seconds, that you realise that those matchbox kits that I've been such a uh, ambassador for, if that's the right word, they are a bit soft aren't they because this is sharp as you like beautiful look at the detail here and the tank here look that's absolutely fantastic that is beautiful very impressed and now the bottom same thing but the bottom wing and actually i was right wasn't to say that whether it's got the, the gear legs on the main gear open or closed the door still shuts behind it which is why it's shown it's permanently shut so i guess you can't display it with the sort of in the act of opening because it doesn't give you that option. They're either open or they're shut, in which case these are always going to be closed. But again, look at the detail here, look at the uh, aileron detail. Look at that. Beautiful. Very, very sharp. Nice sharp ejector seats as well, some more nice moulding going on here. Um, I have to say that the pilots look absolutely terrible. Um, they are very flashy indeed. That's super flashy. Compared to the rest of the sprue, which is absolutely fine. It's just like they couldn't be bothered with this bit. It's flash all over it. No flash on any of that sprue. I'll cover it up. Nothing else has got a flash. And then flash city. Very, very bad. And they don't look great. I've got to be honest. Um, I won't go as far as to not include them, but that might be something that others would do, I think. Give them a miss. On the plus side, we just ignore those pilots because they're just tragic. So they're, I'm going to mark you down for that airfix. Uh, but these are beautiful. Look at the weight on wheels. They're absolutely superb. You've got ejector seats, you've got weight on wheels. It's even weight on wheels for the nose wheel look. Look at that. So how can they do that so beautifully and then make such a poor effort with the pilots? Which look like something from 1972. It's a bit disappointing. But no, most of it is beautiful. And the, the tails as well, you've got the elevators here. Look at those. That's nice. And then finally, we have got all the fuselage. Zoom out a little bit. Let's try and zoom you. I zoom the copyright. There we go. Nice. Look at the detail here. Got some beautiful panel lining. Yeah, we got all the uh, some good detail in the uh, cockpit as well. Some nice fine sharp moulding there. That's gorgeous. Can't fault that. Very nice. 
and then we've got your rudder here which is good intakes here the baffles you've got your two options for your bay doors for the nose leg extended undercarriage closed here that looks really nice as well and then you've got your little uh, these are the little covers for the ejector seat grab handles and then you've got your center part of the ejector seat which again look really nice for this scale beautiful and that's the instrument panel very very nice um i'm a little bit taken aback uh, it's like a it's a bit like a kit of two opposites really I'd say that the moulding there is as good as anything at this scale I've seen except the pilots which are tragically bad I don't know why that would be, that's just weird it's just like they just couldn't be bothered you know uh, anyway I'm going to mark it down for that and say 8 out of 10 and frankly uh, to be fair it would have been 10 I think that the instructions are great, the decals are great you know, the paint guide and the moulding for every other part of that kit looks so nice and they just couldn't be bothered with the pilot so airfix and the stand so maybe it's seven and a half out of ten <laughs> I'll, I'll mark you one down for the pilots and one down for the stand we'll say eight I think that's reasonable to be honest but it's a nice kit I wouldn't don't be put off you can always leave it open with no pilots in there your problem is solved isn't it there we go anyway so that's the Hunt, hunting Percival Jet Provis T4 it's uh, kit number A02107 which I forgot to mention at the beginning so you might need that pick that up for about a tenner no problem at all hope you enjoyed that if you did please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to if you haven't already to subscribe and if you already did that don't forget to tick the notification bell so you get alerted next time we have another vid of, of note that you might enjoy and I look forward to seeing you again soon, hopefully with some more interesting vids. In the meantime, look after yourselves. Thanks for your time. Take care of yourselves. And bye for now.